What is the role of historical trauma and its impact, not just on Alaskan Natives, but also on the young people there? Well, when we talk about historical trauma, we are generally talking about the historical traumas that have been visited upon the Alaska Native cultures. And it's colonialism, it is the experience of missionaries and Catholic priests coming to Alaska, and what we have only recently learned while we knew that Catholic priests were responsible for sexual abuse of sometimes 90% of people in rural Alaska villages. We didn't really understand that if they'd been abusive in churches, in communities in the lower 48, the Catholic church punished them by sending them to remote areas within Alaska where they really had free reign and no oversight. And there have been several documentaries, there have been several class action lawsuits arising from the sexual abuse that occurred throughout Alaska. And it's bankrupted some Catholic churches (laughs) as a result. But there was no word in Alaska Native cultures for rape. That was something that was introduced to their culture. And along with that, and like many Native American communities, there was an effort to kill their culture, to make them more white, to make them more American. And so they removed all of the youth from the villages and sent them to remote boarding schools. They refused to allow them to speak their language, to dance their dances, to sing their songs, to have their religion. And that really resulted in these children being completely isolated and separated from their culture. And then when they returned home, they couldn't talk to their parents. They couldn't communicate with their grandparents. They couldn't benefit from the resilience of culture. And they were caught in between. They weren't really accepted by the dominant white culture, and they weren't accepted back at home. They didn't really have a home anymore. So they were easily susceptible to the victimization of priests and other white colonialists that brought in and introduced sexual violence, something that they had never known before. When that was introduced and not having the benefit of their culture, that propagated. They didn't have any connection within their communities to get power. They found other ways to exert power. Unlike a lot of states in the lower 48 with high populations of Native Americans, maybe living on reservation land and that sort of thing. While they have a high incidence of domestic violence and sexual assault as well, they tend to be taken advantage of by white male offenders. And here in Alaska, particularly Western Alaska, those demographics are a little different. The offenders are just as likely to be Alaska Native than they are white. It's that completely being cut off from their culture that has created traumas that have been visited upon the sons and daughters for generations. And there is a lot of work being done in resilience and culture appropriation to learn more about their cultures, to regain language. And those are all really hopeful prevention measures that are being taken. But, you know, it has to be done with a lot of forethought, a lot of will, and we have a huge number of Alaska Natives that are incarcerated in our state. And so looking at some other models of justice that are more appropriate to their culture that take into consideration their means of living, being subsistence, and living off the land, and also prompts a lot of people to keep secrets in rural villages because the person who is the great hunter, maybe the whale hunter, or gets all of the caribou for the village is abusing his power and is a sexual predator. And people don't talk about it because they value that he is the biggest provider in the community. So they are at risk if something happens to him. So there are a lot of communities where sexual violence isn't talked about, where it is kept secret. That goes for a lot of uh, demographics, right? That can happen in a family that is white Caucasian as well, where nobody talks about it, where it's hidden, where it may be 
a secret that everybody knows, but nobody talks about it out loud. But historically, it has been more difficult for Alaska Natives because they never had a word for rape. And we train people on our statewide sexual assault crisis line to understand that when someone refers to my uncle, for example, has been bothering me, that that means that their uncle is either grooming them or sexually abusing them. And the term bother really is the closest word. It's moleste in Spanish or Latin. And so if you think they've been introduced to Latin uh, through Catholic missionaries and in churches, that bothering or molesting is about the closest word that they could get to. So we train our crisis line responders to read between the lines and understand what they're talking about. They may not overtly be able to express in words what's happening, but we can talk about what some of the behaviors are.